Welcome to lesson one. Here we're going to create our first installer using Setup Factory Windows Installer. The first screen we see is the Start a New Project dialog, which allows us to choose between building an installer project or a merge module project. In this case, we're going to build an installer project. So you can see now we can go through the project wizard. And uh, I've already pre-filled it out with our company name. Uh, that's our, the name of the product we're making the installation for, the version and the company URL. This is the folder where we are getting our files from. You can click the Browse button to open a browser folder screen. And here we can choose the type of interface we want to have for our installation. In this case, we're going to choose the Install Folder type. Now you can see it's added the files to our project and given them defaults, uh, default installation folders. Uh, it's maintained our directory structure that we have on our system. You can see here that it created shortcuts automatically for help files and executables. Um, you can click on the columns to quickly sort by these different uh, criteria properties. What we'll do is um, we don't want to create a shortcut for this update executable, um, so we simply double click it choose the shortcut tab and turn off that option. What we will also do is add a shortcut for the user's guide to the start menu, as well we will add for our main product X executable, let's turn on the desktop shortcut. In Setup Factory um, all the options you can configure for your project are under the project menu and actions that you can configure to take place during installation on the actions menu. They're also down this taskbar on the side. What we'll do is go into and look at the folders dialog. This dialog allows you to configure the folders that are uh, going to be used and defined for our installer, uh, folders that we can assign files or actions to. You can see the program files folder. This represents the um, C, usually C program files directory on your system. And it's created product X, our product name. Let's grab that from the wizard. And given that, it's the default name. We can double click it. You can see here, that's the name of the folder that will actually be created on the system. The folder ID is a unique identifier, sort of an index for this folder that uniquely identifies it within um, the, for the Windows installer and for Setup Factory. Um, two folders can have the same name, but two folders cannot have the same ID. Installed there is a special folder that represents the application directory that is the base install folder that where we want our software to go to. Um, in this case, installed there represents program files, product X. The program menu folder is the start programs folder on the system. And you can see we're creating a folder called Product X underneath that, um, which will then be where our shortcuts are installed to. You can add uh, other base folders that are supported by the Windows installer. Yeah, if you wanted to, for example, install the subfolder Windows folder, you can add a new subfolder to that or use it directly. There are other folders here as well, such as 64-bit uh, program files folders. Um, we can go to launch conditions and you can specify conditions that need to be met such as operating systems or other system checks or your own custom conditions that must be met in order for the installation to be able to continue. Setup Factory allows you to configure multiple languages. Um, although the actual Windows installer only allows one language per installation, um, Setup Factory allows you to add multiple languages so that you can configure and design your installer to work or to be built in multiple languages. And then at build time, it actually allows you to choose the language you want. Setup Factory comes with a bunch of pre-translated languages. Uh, more should be added all the time. For now, we'll add French. Click OK. Next is the dialog editor. Now, this is where you can fully configure um, and edit the user interface that will come up during the installation. When we're in simple mode, we see basically the sequence of screens that'll appear um, when the user just runs the installer for the first time, that is when the software is not already installed on the system. 
you can see we can go and insert, we can add different types of uh, controls that are supported by the Windows installer. For example, I can add a push button. You can move them around. You can double click them to edit their properties. And you can remove them. What we'll do for demonstration's sake is go into the license agreement screen. Uh, we double clicked on that field to bring up the scrollable text properties and we'll import our license RTF file. There it is. Um, you can also switch to advanced mode, which allows you much more finer control over um, the different sequences that are run, uh, the different entry points into the user interface sequences, um, as well as some of the support dialogues that are in the product. You can see you can also change the language here and change what language you're editing in at the time. Makes it very convenient for doing translation and customization. There's down the side you can see system editors where you can configure registry changes, any file changes, etc. Uh, as well as extensions. Uh, there are more extensions being added all the time. Right now you can see at this point there's the IIS or Internet Information Server extensions. Um, which allow you to create new websites, virtual directories, application pools, and extensions within uh, Internet Information Server. Well, the next thing we'll do is actually build our installer. And choose yes. You can see it allows us to choose which language we want to build the installer in. And it goes through. What it's doing at this point is actually generating um, Windows installer XML files. So they're uh, files that are used by the Wix compiler to compile into uh, actual MSI Windows installer database files. Um, it links them and then uh, it actually is at this point running a full uh, ICE validation suite to ensure that the uh, database created is valid and passes the ICE validation tests. Okay, now it's finished. And there you can see the setup MSI file. Um, we can edit it with Orca if you have Orca installed on your system. Orca comes with the uh, platform SDK, the Microsoft platform SDK. And you can see all our different tables and databases. Uh, the MSI databases can be quite complicated and, and um, they're not real readable. But the point is you can see here that, that we have created a fully uh, compatible uh, legitimate MSI file. We can run the installer. We'll go through and test it. It's actually installing product X onto the system. Okay, and it's finished. Um, we can test the installer or test the product installation. Here's our shortcut on the desktop. There's product X. It also created a um, log of everything that happened during the build process in case there are any errors or warnings that you want to go back and check or have as an audit. So you can see that that's just a very simple um, installation for a product, but it is quite simple to do this uh, to make Windows installers with Set of Factory for Windows installer. We will in future lessons go into much more depth about some of these options and how to do different things. Um, but you can see on the surface that it is incredibly easy and a very uh, point and click experience to make a Windows installer.